you know the voice. I'm out of love, you know the hits. To be left outside alone. And with her signature tinted shades, you remember her iconic look. Anastasia, the leather lung diva who became an integral part of Naughty's Pop. It was the late 90s. The teen pop craze dominated music. How could she compete with pop stars nearly half her age? Struggling to pay the rent, Lisa Broadday, her manager, pleaded with her to join one more audition. It was the pioneering TV talent show, the first in a line of new singing competitions. Hosted by the late Lisa Lefty Lopez from TLC, MTV's The Cut in 98 took amateur singers who were under 30 and allowed them to perform their own songs in front of an all-star judging panel, hoping to become stars themselves. I'm saying the three ingredients of a hit record are the song, the song, and the song, but I bet you he would have said that the fourth ingredient would be the person delivering it and the voice delivering it. I'm a sucker for great voices, and Anastasia, you have a great voice. I mean, a really great voice. The show included a then unknown Neo and Aloe Black. Producers shaved off five years from Anastasia's age to make her eligible for the contest, and she blew the judges away. She performed her own song, Not That Kind, which would later become the title track of her debut album. Although only coming runner-up, the exposure led to a huge bidding war which included a phone call from Michael Jackson. Eventually, David Massey signed Anastasia to Daylight Records, an offshoot of Sony BMG. However, before her first single was ever released, behind-the-scene problems were developing. A still unsolved mystery occurred where someone working for Sony messed up things with US radio and as a result Anastasia got caught in the middle. This led to her music being boycotted from the US airways, a radio revenge tactic to get back at Sony. With an entire album and music videos recorded, her team decided to concentrate on the overseas market. And this is where things truly blew up. I'm Out of Love, her first single, became a defining track of 2000. I'm Out of Love was a pure kind of dance record, and it's one of the greatest dance records of all time. It became the biggest selling song of the year in Australia and New Zealand. And in Europe, it entered the top five in multiple countries, Ireland, Italy, Belgium, Croatia, Czech Republic, France, the Netherlands, Norway, I could go on, becoming the fourth biggest selling song of the year on the continent. Her debut album, Not That Kind, went three times platinum in Australia, four times platinum in Europe, and by the following year in 2001, Anastasia was declared the world's best selling new female pop act at the World Music Awards. Everything that made her unattractive to record labels in the 90s was now celebrated in the 2000s. Her cavernous tone was praised by Pavarotti and Elton John, her glasses becoming a fashion statement. She quickly built up a diverse fan base of misfits who championed her as a woman in direct opposition to what Manny saw as a vacuous pop scene full of lip-syncing beauties. She's a great live performer and there aren't that many great live performers out there from the new generation. They're a product of videos and they're a product of MTV and they go in there and lip, lip sync, and, and it's pretty much vacuous. Anastasia isn't vacuous, it's full on talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anastasia for Manny was seen as an antidote to the lack of vocal skill in the pop world. Her matured, seasoned sound was in contrast to much of bubblegum pop, and her nonchalant attitude in showing off large scar was unusual for the time. The album showcased her malleable voice, singing everything from R&B to country-inspired pop. Her direct conversational lyrics and versatile voice, which could be both booming and vulnerable, made her an instant star. That same year, her second album, Freak of Nature, was released. Although the lead single, Paid My Dues, wasn't as globally successful, it still managed to chart in the top 10 of 18 European countries, and the album eventually sold under 5 million, going three times platinum in Europe. The second single, One Day in Your Life, became a pop favourite, and one of her most loved hits. Once again, her team attempted to promote in the US, however, the radio boycott continued. She performed at Divas Live alongside Celine Dion, however their version of You Shook Me All Night Long was eventually declared the worst cover of all time by some publications. To add fuel to the fire, Anastasia messed up the words to the national anthem. In a post 9-11 America, this was deeply offensive. Freak of Nature eventually peaked at 27 on the Billboard 200 before quickly dropping off. It's interesting to note that Anastasia was routinely compared with Tina Turner in terms of vocal tone, and for some time Tina's music was far more successful in Europe than America. Was it that the US market just were not interested in such a rich, cavernous voice at the time?
Nevertheless, Anastasia's presence on the global stage was far more impressive. She performed the official song for the 2002 FIFA World Cup and recorded the official soundtrack for the Oscar-winning film Chicago. With plans for a tour underway, little did she know that her world was about to fall apart. A floodgate came out. I collapsed to my knees and my mom just held me and all I could hear is my sister crying on the other end. Because all we thought was, is it's over. It's done. When I got on the phone with uh, the doctor, he said, you're going to have a long life. And I was like, <laughs> but? And he said, um, but it's malignant and we found cancer. And I was like, whoa. And I just started just bawling. Due to chronic back pain, Anastasia decided to undergo breast reduction surgery. The mammogram required for the pre-op revealed she had an aggressive form of breast cancer. A two-hour surgery turned into eight and a grueling treatment of radiotherapy was needed, severely weakening her voice. During recovery and shocked by her own mortality and the desire to actualize her full musical potential, she began experimenting with new sounds. Um, Sprock music is soul pop rock. And when making this album, I was trying to figure out what I could do to incorporate a little bit edgier sound to my music because I felt like that was what was missing. But I didn't want to go so rock that it just totally didn't make sense. So I needed to keep the soul. I needed to keep the pop edge, the catchier melodies and stuff. But I needed a little bit of rocks. This sound was evident with the lead single released in 2004, the career defining Left Outside Alone. In fact, the faint head voice opening was inspired by the weak voice radiotherapy calls that was audible on the original demo. The album was much darker, with raw, candid lyrics about her experiences, and it was a massive comeback, becoming one of the defining songs of 2004 and helping the album become the second biggest selling in Europe of the year, hitting number one in 11 European countries. Her popularity reached its peak that same year when she launched the most successful solo European tour of 2004 while tirelessly campaigning for cancer awareness. Why can't people with breast cancer be pinup chicks? <laughs> I've already made four eye pinup chicks look okay. You know, I'm defying all the rules. You can have a scar, you can wear glasses, and you can have booby cancer. In less than four years, Anastasia had released three usually successful multi-platinum selling albums and had become an unconventional but beloved major figure in the world of pop. However, fractures began occurring behind the scenes. Success in her native United States had always evaded Anastasia and although an alternative video was recorded for Left Outside Alone and a promo plan for the States announced, Anna backed out of all US promotion last minute and the album was never released in the US. During this period, Anastasia also split from her longtime manager Lisa Broadet. Hopes for an Australian tour never materialised. Welcome to the country. This is your first ever Australian tour. It is my first. I'm still trying to f work my head around that. I don't even know. I just never really toured the first three albums. It was a management thing. Ah. She's never toured me. Well, let's so. get the manager in the chair right now. She's, right. Not, <laughs> she's not here anymore, so ah, we, we moved are. on. And instead, two more European tours occurred in 2005, becoming hugely successful. However, it was now over two years since her cancer diagnosis, and she consistently worked through it with little to no rest. Instead, she was frequently touring all over Europe with a two-hour show that included 20-plus vocally demanding songs, and, unlike many of her contemporaries, the show was 100% live. In between the shows, she was still promoting her usually successful album, so between making videos, touring, interviews and travelling, she was quickly becoming burnt out. And instead of offering rest, Sony had other plans. Money was lost on the cancelled American promo for Left Outside Alone, so instead the label decided to release a greatest hits, using stills of the cancelled American video for Left Outside Alone as the album's artwork. Anastasia had no choice in the release of The Greatest Hits as she didn't own the right to her music and with the necessary promo and need for new bonus promotional songs, a much needed rest in fact turned into another full year of work. The album was a surprising success. It went platinum in the UK and its duet single I Belong To You with Eros Ramazzotti was a massive hit in continental Europe. However, the distress in her hectic life was palpable on the title track Pieces of a Dream recorded during her gruelling touring schedule that dehumanised her into a musical commodity. The song was written between shows as her estranged father died. And to add fuel to the fire, during this hectic period, she had another cancer scare. 
where momentarily it was believed the disease had returned. As the promo for The Greatest Hits eventually began to wind down, 2006 turned into 2007 and Anastasia took a vital break from the industry, marrying her longtime bodyguard. However, as her personal life reached new peaks, her professional life became more and more muddled. In 2007, David Massey, the a &R who originally signed Anna to Sony, left the label to become part of Mercury Records in the UK. Anastasia, out of loyalty, decided to move with him before her original deal with Sony had concluded. If I'm being honest, this move to Mercury Records permanently impacted her career. 